Notice that's all that's happened here. To go from the short version to the long version, you just replace x with ax plus b. And then you simply add an extra 1 over a multiplier. Otherwise, same rule. So I don't memorize the long rule, I only memorize the short rule. Questions? Awesome. Uh, if you look at the other rules, they're the same thing. Like, uh, I don't have any others listed here. Like, if you look at the cosine rule, to get the long version, all I do is replace x with ax plus b. And add an extra 1 over a multiplier. Plus C is part of every rule, so that's not really anything to, to, to worry about. Why are you adding, like, by the one over A? Um, the quick answer is that's just how the rule works. Um, <laughs> the, um, here's an example of it. Like, if I had to find the antiderivative of the cosine just making up a problem, of 3x plus 7. Using the rule, that's going to become 1 over a, so 1 over 3, uh, sine of 3x plus 7. Two points for Riley. It's a very valid question. And then I would have plus some constant. I don't know. It's like plus 10, minus 5, whatever. You good to hear? Okay, so that's just using the rule. Now, here's a proof that the rule works, is if I were now to take the derivative of this, so I take the derivative of 1 third sine of 3x plus 7 plus a constant. So this is using the green rule sheet. What you'll get is Taking the derivative of an adding constant will be zero. That's why all the rules have a plus c, is because if we started with something where there was a constant, when we take the derivative, it's going to become zero. So when we go backwards, we have to put back in the constant. That's why every rule for an antiderivative has a plus c. Uh, right here, the one third would just be a multiplying constant. And then you remember from the green sheet, the derivative of sine is cosine, 3x plus 7. But then you have to take the derivative of the 3x plus 7, which would simply be 3. Those 3's divide out, and you're back where you started. That's what it's meant when we say antiderivative. 
And that's the reason for the 1 over A is to compensate for that occurring. Uh, is that helpful? Please. It's just under it. Say again? So, yeah. But isn't that like similar to what, like a 2 does? So, hey, look, listen, come on, listen. Please memorize the following. Um, Terran's observation is accurate. It feels like it is similar to integration, it is. Uh, in fact, some books will call this integration. I don't like to, I think it's confusing. So I want you to remember that integration is multiplying and adding. This is anti-differentiating. It's going back, it's underivitating, it's underiving, it's whatever you want to call it. The other is multiplying and adding. Now they are connected by the fundamental theorem, but um, I think it's easier if we keep them separate in our brain. Does that make sense? Yes. Go ahead. How do we know when to switch? Well, integral is when we're doing it just for a defined period, and this is an overall equation. So a antiderivative will never have limits. An integral always has limits. And the other word that other books or teachers sometimes use is they'll call what you see on the board now a uh, indefinite integral and they'll call the integral with the limits a definite integral. To me again kind of confusing so I prefer the words antiderivative and integral. So. Okay. Points? Please. Okay. Um, so you so I'm assuming the equation on the left is like the derived version and the equation on the right is what we should have started with. Uh, let me say it back to you. I think you're doing great. If you were to take this equation and apply the green derivative rules, find the derivative of this, you will end up with this right here. Is that what you meant? That's correct. If you take the derivative of this, you get this. So it's a circle. So the antiderivative of this is that. <laughs> like it's a perfect back and forth. So. Although, because of the plus c, uh, this technically has an infinite number of different antiderivatives because of the plus c. Okay, once again, only memorize the five simple formulas. And then the AX plus B versions, you just kind of create when needed. Because it's just AX plus B. So. Awesome. Okay, we're just going to practice now. So don't do the problems on this sheet. Do them on a separate sheet, otherwise it gets way too crowded and uh, one thing I may not have mentioned is if I were you, I would stop. I would take out everything from unit one, except for the reference sheets that are in sheet protectors. I would take all the homework out for unit two and unit three. I don't really think you'll be referencing them again. You'll look back at the, the, the reference sheets, but you won't look at the homework. Yeah, I keep unit four for now. So I'd take those out, put them at home somewhere in case you Somehow I feel like you need to look back at them, but I don't think you will. Most people never do, so it saves quite a bit of weight and space. Okay, go to number one in the buff sheet there. Okay, number one. So write on your paper that anti of five cosine x. Write it down. Antiderivative of five cosine x. Then just write equal. All we do is apply the rule. Five is a multiplying constant, so just like derivatives, you just write it down. The antiderivative of the cosine is the sine. Plus c, I'm finished. That's it. That's it. That's the answer. Here's how you uh, watch. Hey, watch, 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 watch. You don't have to write what I'm going to write in green. If you'd like to, you can. If I were to take the derivative 
of 5 sine of x plus a constant the 5 is a multiplying constant the derivative of sine is cosine and the derivative of a constant all by itself would be 0 so I proved that my answer is correct because I've gone the full circle. I started with 5 cosine x, I found the antiderivative, that's the purple. And then I took the derivative of the purple and I'm back to where I started. So. Question? Awesome. Go to number 2. Write that down. Just write number 2 down in your white paper there. Okay, just like with derivatives, when you have an antiderivative of two terms that are adding, uh, you can split them. Please don't think you want to use the expanded rule here, because even though this is, well, it's two problems. This is an ax. This is ax to the fifth, so the expanded rule won't work, so don't do that. So all you write on the next line is this. Equals, we can just do it in our head. We're going to take the antiderivative of this by itself. So the 18 is a multiplying constant. x to the fifth uses the power rule, which means we simply add 1 to the exponent, divide by the same number. So this becomes x to the sixth divided by 6. Then there'd be a minus <coughs> question so far. Question so far for me. If it feels easy, if that's normal. It should feel easy. So. We all have to put the plus C. We're getting there. We're so not quite actually, there yet. No. You're good. So now we're going to do the 10x. So I write down the 10 because that's a multiplying constant. That's x to the first. So the antiderivative rule says I'm going to get x squared over 2. And then I have a plus. The C is traditional. You technically can write any constant you want. You know, m for Marriott, whatever. So. Um, <laughs> Please. Do we have to simplify or no? Um, on the written section of the AP, two for Isaac, on the written section of the AP test, no simplification is required. Okay. So you could stop. On the multiple choice section, your answer probably won't look like that. It'll look like this. Ah, uh, not plus, sorry. So even though we <clears throat> did the antiderivative of the 18x to the fifth separately, we don't have to give it its own separate constant. Good comment. No, because we don't know what the constant is anyway. It's just some unknown number. And so if we had an extra constant, we would just say, oh, we don't know what these two are. But if we added them together, we'd have another thing we don't know. So we just list one. Good question. For Karen. Okay, hey, go to number three. New rule now. So, right equal. The 5 is a multiplying constant. The, the antiderivative of 1 over x is natural log absolute value of x. And done. Five is a multiplied constant, just comes along with you. The antiderivative of one over x is natural log of x. The absolute value are required. Don't forget them because you can't take the natural log of the negative. So. Question. Next one. Rolling, man, roll. Um, we've done a cosine one, so you can do that one at home. Uh, we've done one like that. You can do that at home. I guess we haven't done a sine one. I don't know if it's that much different. But, um, 3 is a constant. The derivative of the sine is the negative cosine. Make sure you don't make it look like you're subtracting.
That's perfect, although on the multiple choice test it would look like this. Questions? At the bottom of the, the rule sheet, there's a little graphic. It's labeled Susie Circle. Um, it's named after a student named was Susie Lin. She came up with the idea. She noticed that when you draw the unit circle, the clock, uh, raise your hand please and tell me. That's a good circle. On the unit circle, raise your hand and tell me. Where is the cosine value? Like at what number on the clock is the cosine value equal to one? Raise your hands, come on. On the clock, on the unit circle, at what number of the clock is the cosine value k equal to one? Three. So right here, cosine is equal to one. Please raise your hand if you knew that. Point two for k. So that means over here, here's where cosine is negative one. Sine's one up here. So this is Susie's circle right here, right in front of you now. That's it. That's simple. Matches the unit circle nicely. And here's what she noticed. If you're finding the derivative, the derivative of sine is cosine. The derivative of cosine is negative one times sine, etc. Works perfect. If you go the other way, which in England they refer to as anti-clockwise. <laughs> Anti-clockwise, like anti-derivative. The anti-derivative of sine is negative cosine, just like this. Look, anti-derivative of sine, negative cosine. So that's how I memorize the last two rules. I don't memorize the rule; I just memorize the circle. Please. We have any of like the uh, integral of negative sine. Yeah. Hey. No. Quiet, 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 quiet. Hey. The antiderivative of negative one times sine would simply be negative. Oops, in the way this way. So negative going this way. So that'd be cosine. Is that what you meant? Yeah. Yep. Two rising question. All right, keep going. Uh, let's do number 30, so jump ahead a little bit. Yeah, yeah the order doesn't matter. You've got to get them all done. Jump to 30. You have two terms adding. So I take out the 4. That's a multiplying constant. The antiderivative of t would be t squared over 2. And I have plus, more to come, but questions so far? Let's see. Okay, you can use a rule on the seven, but it's easier just to use your memory. Uh, please raise your hand if you know the answer to this question. Don't say it out loud, please. Just raise your hand. What goes there? Come on, hands, hands, hands. Come on, come on, come on, more. Y'all know. It's just one unit to go. Brooke Hunter in the back. Is it seven? Please raise your hand if you agree with Brooke. I agree. Point two for Brooke. So, hey, if the derivative of seven times t is just seven, that means the antiderivative of seven all by itself would be seven multiplied by t. So this is seven t and then plus the constant. Question. Next one. That's done. What random number pops up next? That'll work. Go to ten. Go to ten. Okay, I have three turns adding. No big deal. Just do them all separately. So we have negative 25. X to the fifth over five. Minus, there's three. You add one and divide by the same. So 
So I add 1 and divide by the same. Four is a multiplying constant. X to the negative three, add one, divide by the same. We did not have to write out negative two plus one. You did not. So uh, you don't have to write negative two plus one. I was just emphasizing so everyone could see where I was getting the number from. Good question. Two for Taryn. Anybody else? And again, written section of the test, like Isaac said, you could leave a uh, multiple choice. They'll probably do this. Negative 2 plus 1 would be negative 1. This would be negative 2. Uh, then they would likely do one more yeah. line if it's multiple choice. <laughs> uh, they might write it as over 1 over x, so we'll do that. Like that. And they might write that as x squared on the bottom. Maybe not, I don't know. They can help with any of that. we got here. Uh, go to 11. Go to 11. Write it down. Okay. It is critical that you notice that the antiderivative rule for ln, the ln rule does not allow for 1 over x to a power. It's only 1 over x. So you cannot use the ln rule for this problem. Because this is over x to the 4. So you can't use the ln rule. So you have to do a little algebra first. First thing is we recognize the negative 12 as a constant. So you pull it out. 1 over x to the 4th is the same thing as x to the minus 4. Like that. That's not calculus, that's just algebra. Questions? So now, we just use the power rule. So negative 12, mm -hmm. x to the, let's see, negative four plus one would be negative three. Divide by the same. Negatives would divide. I'm going to get a positive 4, x to the negative 3. The 4 doesn't change, but x to the negative 3 is the same thing as 1 over x cubed. Question? Uh, not this one because it still has the antiderivative. So like, yeah, I think you meant that second. Yeah, my bad. Yeah, this one's perfect on the written. Two points for writing. And I will advise you to leave it. No reason to risk making a simple mistake. Okay, homework tonight is really simple. You're not doing all the problems. There's a few you're going to skip. Because we saw that there's another technique that's required to do some of these. The ones I've shown you go as easy as I've shown. They're, they're not hard at all. You should be done like quick. But please don't do the following. So circle these so you don't do them. Do not do number eight, 12, 13, 14, 18, 19. 
should see a pattern. Uh, only 33, 34, actually 33 to the end, so. Good job, guys. Good work. See you next time. Thank <laughs> you.